Okay, good afternoon. <clears throat> good afternoon. Good afternoon, Benedict and Raida. Please show me yourself. Could you, could you please show me yourself? Can you guys hear me? Okay, that's good. Good. Nice see you guys, right? Hmm. So the the better your background is virtual, right? What? Your background is board virtual. Yeah, it is. Okay, looks very good. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's not. I didn't choose it myself. It's a company computer, and they do it automatically. Okay. Oh. That's good. Yeah. Hey, where done? Uh, where are you from? Germany. I'm. From France. Ah, uh, right in France. And I know, yeah, we are actually from Germany. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Wang. Wang. Yeah. Good afternoon, Wang. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah. Kwang uh, is your surname, right? Given name is uh, Siri, right? Mm, yes. Okay. The Siri, Siri, is pronunciation okay? Yeah, you pronounce it uh, right, maybe, <laughs> yes, same uh, how, how How to pronounce it uh, originally? Uh, maybe in Chinese it's uh, si rui, so si it's uh, very similar. <laughs> wow, okay. So I heard that uh, Chinese uh, may not understand when the accent is not uh, Quite correct. Is that true? Uh, sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> okay, so when when foreigners speak Chinese, uh, and then their accent is not very uh precise, then I heard that many Chinese may not understand what the foreigners are actually speaking in Chinese. So accent is pretty important in Chinese. Is oh uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> So even though I tried, I my intended to uh, <clears throat> to uh, speak to you, uh, calling your name. If I, my if my accent is not quite good, then you may not reply, right? <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, the Chinese is pretty difficult, especially the speaking Chinese is pretty challenging. Yes. So do you speak some Korean? Um, I couldn't speak Korean. Okay. The Korean is relatively, uh, it sounds a little bit blunt uh, compared to Chinese or other languages in some sense, because we don't have a much accent. Okay, today uh, we are going to talk about uh, beta and uh, uh, kappa, uh, PEPAM, uh, uh, kappa SM pricing model. So today's topic is pretty important and conceptually, uh, you guys should understand uh, uh, the beta and uh, the based on beta, beta uh, the pricing model, uh, kappa SM pricing model. Uh, cap, uh, cap okay, it's so pretty important. So in the binar, uh, your understanding on these concepts uh, would be crucial. 
So today, <coughs> the, um, we are talking about riskers uh, in terms of the systematic and systematic riskers, and uh, we also talk about diversification and uh, systematic risk and the beta uh, is getting developed and the market portfolio and security market line and the market efficiency. So these are all um, connected, okay? So they are interactive with each other in terms of a concept. <clears throat> um, in the previous lecture, um, we, we took a, uh, this case of stock A and stock B. Um, and we discussed uh, how to uh, construct a, a, port, um, a portfolio. And uh, this is the way how to calculate the portfolio variance and standard deviation. Once you have a variance and you just scale root of variance to standard deviation, right? Uh, in this case, we uh, proportion the 50% to stock A uh, and 50% the other half to stock B. But <clears throat> there, there could be many combinations of stock A and stock B, right? From 0% A, B. In terms of weighting, you could weigh, give weight to 100% to uh, B and 10%, 90%, right? Something like that. And, uh, 100% to uh, weighted on A and 0% on stock B. So you have uh, many, many uh, combinations. You can uh, create many, many combinations of stock A and stock B, change the, uh, the weight, okay, given to the uh, stock. When you have these two stocks, okay, just assume that. Then, um, this is the way how to calculate the, uh, the portfolio variance. So as I explained, uh, uh, you need to calculate, uh, unlike the, um, the, uh, the variance of a single stock, you need to calculate core variance, core variance of both stocks. If you have a three stock and you, you need to calculate the covariance of uh, um, various combinations among uh, three stocks. It depends, uh, it doesn't matter how many stocks you have. So uh, if you have many uh, stocks, then the number of covariance you should calculate is also uh, increases exponentially. Uh, but we, we do not uh, go into that level. We just uh, uh, take two stocks, okay, just to understand the concept of the covariance. So as I explained, the, the covariance is uh, how, uh, uh, whether it is the kind of an indication of whether the, uh, these two stocks, stock A and stock B, uh, move in a coordinated way or uncoordinated way. So whether they move together or independently. That, 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 so the covariance is in the case, uh, covariance is kind of a barometer, uh, uh, the, uh, what about the uh, covariance, uh, yeah, uh, tells uh, the, 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 the uh, co-movement or independent movement of, bit, of the, these two stars, okay? Um, Formula of covariance is, uh, um, this is the coefficient of stock A and B, okay? And this is uh, a standard deviation of A and standard deviation of B. So if you know the, um, the, if you know the, um, the correlation of A and B and standard deviation A, standard deviation B, then you can calculate the covariance. So the, the formula in terms of statistics, uh, in terms of a form a formula, the covariance is, uh, is pretty similar to the 
uh, to the, the 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 formula or the formula for the standard uh, the variance of a single star. But the only difference is that you have uh, two star. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to that the formula of this covariance, but uh, you just understand the covariance is 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 the indicator of whether these two stars move together or independently. Okay, that's the concept you should understand in terms of covariance. That's very important, and uh, you should know you should understand that this covariance is used to calculate uh, the portfolio variance in this manner, okay? Using this uh, formula, okay? So this is going to be the same as a covariance, okay? So I'm not going into the, the details on the, uh, uh, on the uh, formulas of covariance, but you should understand that the concept of covariance, the definition of covariance, okay? Um, so what I'm trying to say is that what I'm trying to say is that if you have uh, these various, uh, if you have, uh, you, you can, you may have, uh, depending on the uh, weight of, uh, uh, depending on the weight uh, for the each star, you may have a different. Different expected return, expected return, and um, variance or standard deviation. Okay. Depending on the weight given to A and B, right? You can come up with many different weights given to A and B, right? But depending on these weights given to A and B, the combination, uh, combination of these two stack of different, based on different weights, they, they each combination have a different expected return and uh, variance, right? So this expected return, Right? Let's say on the y axis, okay? And then let's see, let's say variance is as x, x axis, okay? So using the XR, Based on this expected return and variance is based on, uh, from the uh, different uh, combination of uh, uh, the different combinations. In other words, a different uh, many. This is these are our portfolio, right? Different combination of uh, based on different um, portfolio of A and B based on different combination. Then using the Excel, you are supposed to have this curve. Okay, you, if you actually do it, then you are supposed to have a disk curve. On this curve, all the points, all the points are the combination of A and B, okay? So if you expand this understanding, whatever, combination you have of uh, stock A and B or A and B C depend uh, if you come up with a, a, a various uh, uh, combination of uh, several stock, in other words, portfolios, then you have this curve and this is called efficient frontier. Why? Basically, all the portfolios should be on this on this curve, and unless the combination of uh, 
the uh, stocks, I mean, in terms of uh, return and return and uh, um, the standard deviation, unless the combination, the, the return, return and the uh, standard deviation of, of one specific combination is on this line, they would not be, the, the, the debt portfolio is not, is for example here, right? Or here, right? Or here, here, right? These are these are the uh, the result, the base the result due to the inefficiency. Okay. Um, Because this is kind of should be uh, should be should be should be curve. As I said, based on this all combination, based on this combination, and uh, based on the combination, you are supposed to have a, a specific return and a variance, right? And uh, you expect to return as the AMB is like this, okay? Okay, you guys follow me. Then you are supposed to, uh, in terms of efficient frontier, you should have this one. And all the portfolio should be on this line. That, so this is the result based on our expect, uh, the expected ratio on AMB and the dip based on this and the, the different uh, weighting. We have a different, uh, expect return and variance of a portfolio, right? It, before we come up with uh, portfolios, this uh, ten percent to fifteen percent is just based on uh, uh, is it, just a standard standalone return, okay, of stock A and stock B. But here, when in uh, this area, <clears throat> we move to we using this step A and B, you we come up with the portfolios, right? Using these two stuff, then we are so we. If you're using the asset, if you actually do it, if you want to do it, then you can. You can ask me, okay, later. So we don't have time. You are supposed to have this line. Then we call it efficient frontier. Who called it? Mark Harris. Okay, he he uh, called this line efficient frontier, and any portfolio deviating from this line is the result of inefficiency. Whether when even uh, this one, okay, it looks good, right? For the same uh, risk, it, it has, a, it sh this combination shows a higher return, right? Than this one. But this difference, it looks good, but this is the result of a market efficiency. That's what it says, okay? And, in case, uh, as for this, this combination of uh, uh, asset, this, uh, this portfolio, oh, given the same, uh, same uh, standard deviation or return, uh, same standard deviation, return is lower than this point, right? So then this one is, is not efficient in terms of your investment, right? And this is also the result of uh, inefficiency. <coughs> okay, so this is how you read efficient frontier. And you can see here, right? The efficient frontier is very important in terms of understanding uh, the risk and return. And you see here, so uh, this combination, this portfolio, this combination of stock, right, has the lowest uh, standard deviation, right? It means that it has a uh, uh, minimum variance, right? Minimum, a minimum standard deviation or standard uh, variance is the same, right? So that's the square of the standard deviation variance. So minimum variance portfolio. So this portfolio has the 
minimum risk. So if you are investor who is uh, um, extremely averse to the risk, then it's gonna take this combination of stock, this portfolio, right? And as you are becoming, as you're becoming more, um, becoming, uh, tend to take a more risk, right? Then your, your portfolio, your choice of portfolio move on this line, this way. Right. So if you are very extremely, uh, if you are if you are a risk taker, then you are supposed to portfolio sitting on probably yeah this point. So then, but if you have a higher risk, then you are supposed to have also a higher return. Okay, so. Um, this, this is the right. How about this one? We also have this portfolio using uh, uh, this portfolio also uh, uh, comes from uh, one of these portfolio, right? The, this one is is not good. Why? Because uh, based on the same standard deviation, we also have uh, another portfolio that has a higher return, right? So starting from this minimum variance, okay, like this, any portfolio below this minimum um, variance portfolio should not be chosen. Right, because we have a higher return for the same level of risk. Right, you get it? Mm -hmm. So, understanding this efficient, what efficient frontier is, we are another one. These are all risky assets. Or risk asset. I mean, stock A and B, stocks are risk asset. Okay. So using the risk asset, okay, we have this efficient front line. If you have a different combination of, uh, yeah, these two stocks based on different weight. Okay. So using the Excel, you are supposed to have this line, and this is the way how to read this efficient uh, frontier, okay? And this is all based on two risk guess or three, or mm, it, it, if you want, if you have good uh, tools, then you can uh, calculate, uh, if you want, you can make uh, this efficient frontier, efficient frontier based on the, Many many uh, stocks. Okay. Okay, and then um, here, this is a standard deviation. Okay, this is we until now we use standard deviation as an indicator of risk, right? Standard deviation is uh, uh, the level of uh, deviation from mean, right? Um, and uh, this standard deviation is is um, is of uh, uh, stock A, stock B, or whatever stock, okay? This standard deviation. Um, and we call this is risk of each stock, okay? But 
Um, there are two types of risk actually. One is a systematic risk. The other one is unsystematic risk. Uh, when the stock has uh, some specific amount, some specific amount of standard deviation, okay? This deviation from the mean, I mean, this risk from the mean has two natures. One is uh, avoidable risk. The other one is unavoidable risk. So avoidable risk, we call it unsystematic risk or diversifiable risk. And sorry, avoidable risk, right? Unavoidable risk is called systematic risk or market risk. We are living in the world of different, many, many different types of risk, right? But some risks are avoidable, some risks are unavoidable. Unavoidable risk is called systematic, avoidable risk is unsystematic. Okay. Um, okay. Avoidable risk is the individual uh, a risk that applies to only some specific stocks or some specific cases. For example, um, Korea. Wow, South Korea is close to North Korea, right? And if you live in, just assume that if you live in, uh, when you live in Korea, you may feel sometimes worried about the harsh words from North Korea, right? So that is kind of a risk uh, of living in Korea. So if you want to avoid that specific risk, there are some ways to, to avoid that you may go to another country, right? So this is kind of a risk you can avoid. But what if, uh, what about the climate change? Climate change is nowhere to escape. There may be, but the climate change is kind of a global issue, right? So it's pretty difficult to totally escape from this climate change. So the same goes for the stock market or uh, investment investment. Some stocks has their own unique risks. And this such a, a, individual, individualistic and unique risk can be avoided. How? If you have uh, some other types of stock, if you have a, if you uh, if you have a different types of stock then one risk can be opposite by another one, okay? So any risk that can be avoided or decreased by diversification is called unsystematic risk. But what if the market, whole market, um, just, uh, yeah, um, like uh, 2008 financial crisis or uh, moving uh, back the Great Depression, early, early 20s. But there are some market, uh, so there are some situations where all the stocks are affected by the uh, economic situations, right? So that kind of a risk we cannot avoid. Whatever, the, whatever stock you have, uh, the risk that you cannot avoid is called a systematic risk. So standard deviation, actually the risk containing both systematic and unsystematic risk. And if you are good investor, smart investor, you should eliminate this unsystematic risk as possible. Why? Because unsystematic risk sometimes not compensated with the returns. So if you take a risk, if you take a risk, you are supposed to get return, receive a return. But on systematic risk, sometimes you may not get return. 
or taking the risk, this unsystematic risk. So that's why we have to eliminate unsystematic risk as possible. How? Diversify. Okay. Diversify. You you should not put all your capital into one spe specific uh, stock. You should diversify your capital into different types of uh, uh, industry and uh, regions and uh, uh, different size of uh, yeah stock. Okay. So you if you diversify. You, you may uh, put some of the capital into stock, some uh, bonds, some real estate, or some uh, in uh, coins, for example, or some equity, uh, private equity, right? So then it is kind of a diversification of your uh, investment, which eliminates, uh, minima minimize the systematic, uh, unsystematic risk, okay? Uh, let's uh, so let's take on this question to exercise that we understand. Can I get back to the previous slide, please? Sorry. Can I get back to the previous slide? This one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
cycle, business cycle. So um, systematic risk is a, uh, very similar to business cycle. So we have uh, uh, different types of business cycle, right? Recession and boom, right? Recession is up, up boom, up to boom is recession. So in recession, most of the stocks are suffering. But in the boom period, many stocks are, yeah, the stock price is going up like this. Okay. Uh, you get it? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Short term interest rate increased unexpectedly. Is this systematic or systematic or unsystematic? Systematic. Yeah, systematic. Most companies are affected by short term interest. Is there any company not affected by short term interest? I don't think so. Right. How about DB? Interest rate a company pays on its short term debt borrowing is increased by its bank. Systematic or unsystematic? Systematic. It affects only this company. So unsystematic, right? Yes. Systematic. Oil prices are unexpectedly decline. Systematic or systematic? Uh, it's confusing because uh, oil prices affects a lot of uh, parts in the economy, a lot of companies and a lot of economies. I would say it is systematic. Yeah, uh, close to systematic right? rather than unsystematic. Right, you're right. Oil tanker ruptures creating a large oil sphere. Systematic or systematic? Unsystematic. Yeah, systematic. It's going to be gone away sooner or later, right? Uh, it affects only limited uh, area. Manufacturer loses a multi million dollar product liability suit. This is definitely unsystematic. And Supreme Court decision substantially broadens producer liability for injuries suffered by product users. Um, yeah, Supreme Court uh, may have impact on the industry wide uh, right? impact, so systematic. Okay, we have some understanding on the difference between systematic and systematic risk. And um, yeah, so okay, let's assume that we diversified our investment and we eliminated all unsystematic risk. So then we are uh, left with a systematic risk only, right? So then how, how, how do we measure uh, the systematic risk of our investment? Okay. Um, then we have a beta, okay? A beta is, uh, uh, is a measure of a volatility. Uh, systematic risk of a security or portfolio compared to market as a whole. Okay, um, okay, so uh, we want to, we want, we, you want to eliminate all unsystematic risk. What's the best way eliminating um, the all unsystematic risk as possible? What is the most, uh, not, not perfect, but close to perfect way of eliminating a systematic risk. How? How? Where? The best way is to investor and diversify your whole investment in, in, into whole market. So if you have a uh, small piece of shares of uh, super, uh, small piece of shares in the whole market, Right, then you are, yeah, pretty well diversified. So market portfolio, market portfolio means that you, if you have a whole market, if your portfolio consists of, if your portfolio is consist of a whole market shares, then in terms of diversification and elimination of uh, uh, unsystematic risk you are close to perfect, right? 
Um, Professor, I'm sorry, I didn't got it. Can you explain again, please? Okay. So, system, unsystematic risk, the unique risk of single uh, security can be eliminated by diversification. Diversification means that you have uh, you have different types of stock in the market, right? In your portfolio. So the, in the market, there are, for example, uh, S&P 500. So the S&P 500 is a uh, um, market index, uh, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which uh, tracks uh, the most uh, valuable companies in the US um, the market. Uh, there's a loss there. Uh, there are some, okay. Let's say there is some, um, some index, okay? Index that follows the whole market. Okay, there are some index. So uh, the, the shares in this index actually, uh, yeah, reflecting the whole market. Let's assume that, right? Then if you have a, not a whole market, you just, if you have just a small piece of uh, shares of each of a whole stocks in the market, then you actually uh, hold a piece of a whole market. Let's say uh, 100, there are uh, less um, the whole market, let's say whole market is 100%. And if you take just a piece of this market, whole market, let's say you have a 1% of the whole market, right? So this is just, this is also, this is can be also market portfolio, but the only difference is the size, right? Size is just 1%. one percent. Uh, so if you have one uh, one piece of uh, shares in the in the whole stock, right in the market, then you have actually uh, market portfolio, while the size is um, yeah just one one percent. So that is the best way to diversify your investment. That's what I'm saying. So by the definition of unsystematic risk. We virtually eliminate or we supposed to eliminate a whole unsystematic risk because that risk is a uh, individual risk. So uh, the best way to uh, get rid of uh, individual risk is to diversify. So the, we we really diversify our investment right by holding one piece of the shares in the world. So that is the. Yeah, that is the that is the um, so what about your question? That 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 that, that is the 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 effect of uh, uh, that that is the benefit of uh, that is the benefit of holding market uh, put. So what was your question? I forgot. I didn't get the, when you first was explained. Now I think I'm I'm okay. Okay, sorry, uh, I forgot. Anyway, <clears throat> that's good as far as you understand. And the beta, beta is a measure of volatility, uh, systematic risk of security portfolio compared to market as a whole. So, okay, so uh, market, market is the uh, market is the kind of our. Uh, uh, ideal portfolio, right? Ideal market is our benchmark, okay? And in the market, but uh, realistically, we cannot have all the shares in the market, right? So we want to a value, we want to measure uh, the risk of each stock compared to um, to the return of a market. 
So each stock has its own systematic and systematic risk, right? And the market has its own risk, which is called systematic risk, right? So this beta is the, in other words, the risk of individual security compared to uh, uh, compared to the market as a whole. So when the um, when the market when the whole market we have uh, see. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, SM, where is SMP 500? Um, SMP 500. Okay, SF 500 um, as I close. So yesterday, yeah, it lost uh, 2.08, 2.08%, 2 right? So this is the, uh, we, can, we can take uh, as a proxy, we can take this as a, a market uh, portfolio. So uh, the market actually lost 0 0.2, 0 point, uh, 0, uh, uh, minus, 2.08%. Uh, but let's say, for example, Meta single, it has gained about 5%, right? It's a little bit, big. I think this, this is the result of a layoff. So Meta recently <laughs> announced a huge, huge number of layoffs. So investors may have some, <laughs> um, yeah, take that as a good news. So. Anyway, and then there's the article. Yeah, there's the article. Yeah, so, so I didn't mean it to sure. There's the article. I was reading that. So Meta basically it's, it's Meta. Oh. So, like, yeah, he was, he yeah. so just uh, it's almost 10, 13 percent from dawn from sunrise to sunset. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Emma, could you could you be on mute? I don't know if you be just ask a question. So, what I'm saying is that when the market moves, uh, this is uh, the the individual stock may have uh, may uh, move differently. May uh, yeah may go uh, up or may go down. So the return of uh, individual star may not go hand in hand with uh, the market. So let's say market, let's call market is the mean, average, okay? And the single security uh, return any deviation from uh, the mean return, okay? Market is remitter. And the return of a single security, it, it, any deviation of a single, uh, deviation of a return of a single security from the mean return, market return, is risk. Why? As I said, Market risk is a systemic risk, right? And uh, um, and uh, if you have the whole market, the, the changes in the return of the market is uh, uh, is the return for uh, systemic risk. But if there is any uh, deviation in return from the market return, that is the result of unsystematic risk. So single security uh, unique risk. 
So difference between mean return and uh, uh, return of uh, single securities, uh, the, the uh, single security or specific security is risk. That risk is measured by beta. Okay, so beta is the measure of uh, volatility of uh, returns uh, for some specific security. So if beta is, uh, the one is, one is the beta of market portfolio. Why? Market is the risk of a market uh, a portfolio is itself, right? So one is a uh, beta of market portfolio. So if once if the beta of one single security or one security is if uh, if the one single security or single security is beta is uh, higher than one, it means that it has more volatility than the market. Okay, so when market's return is one percent, then the that security and the, the security beta is let's say two, then the single that security's return is gonna change. It's gonna increase the, uh, by two percent. Or if the beta is minus minus one, right? So then when market increases uh, in return by 1% and the, the security has the uh, beta uh, minus beta one, then its return is gonna have minus 1% when market increases by 1%, okay? Here. So for us, it's better to have more than one or less than one. Uh, well, as I said, higher, higher. So if a beta is a higher than, as the beta is getting higher and higher, which means that the uh, it, it, it the riskier, uh, risk and riskier, right? So if you are. Uh, kind of person who like to take a risk, then maybe uh, the, the stock with a higher beta would be preferred for the investor, for that risk-taking investor, right? But if you are the person who is who's very averse to risk, then you may not take that stock with high beta, higher beta. Right, because that security has a more unsystematic risk. Let's see. Um, okay, meta here you see beta five year monthly uh, over the last five years based on the monthly return, it has a beta of one point one four. So this means that, oh, when market, the return of a beta is pretty, has shows a very uh, similar movement to, to the market in terms of return, okay? Let's take um, Microsoft, oh, no, no, Tesla. Is better is almost two, two. This means that when marketing increases one percent, the Tesla may increase in terms of return two percent. But it, but but uh, but in other words, market declines one percent, Tesla may decline two percent. Okay, because of higher risk. So this beta shows the risk of the volatility of the single uh, specific security compared to the return of the market, market return. 
Okay. So higher beta means higher risk. Okay. Anyone who does not show yourself, please show yourself, okay? I'm gonna check out from today uh, whether you guys show yourself. So if you if someone who does not show yourself, but I take I, I take it as a, an episode, okay? Because I don't I cannot check whether you are listening, you are actually attending this class. If, if if the monitor is just black, okay, okay. So so. So beta coefficient uh, is, let's take, um, I'm gonna explain this a little bit later, a little bit later. Um, okay, let's take this one first. Okay, um, I made this. Oh. Tesla. This is 500. Okay, so <clears throat> taking SMP5 as a proxy, uh, for market, I compared the, the, uh, the market return and uh, uh, Tesla's uh, uh, return, I mean, the stock prices, S&P 500, the, the Tesla stock price, monthly uh, stock price has changed uh, from um, this is the, uh, the, the historical data from 2019 and uh, uh, yeah, monthly data, monthly stock price. And uh, this is the SM500 uh, uh, index, uh, index rate, right? So, This is a change market a change in the market return. Uh, I don't know. This is a, a Tesla meta. I used it. Uh, I used it on one of the companies. Maybe this one is meta. Meta is Facebook, you guys know, right? So this is the change in the uh, stock return. You, you, see, you can see uh, double click how I calculate this return. So I, I, I'm trying to explain how we get this line, okay? This linear line. Here, um, Okay. Mm. This is the uh, uh, this is the axis, the x, x axis. Okay, this is the x line. This is the y line. And uh, if, you, if I click this, so this shows the. Uh, each uh, this uh, point, this point is 
uh, this whole point is the uh, the reflection of this uh, uh, monthly return between monthly return of the SMB five and the meta, and and uh, this is the trend line. Okay, so uh, using this uh, historical data SMB five hundred meta you can calculate uh, the changes in return of it uh, over SM5 brand and meta, right? And then you can uh, show these changes in this uh, scattered uh, points. And then uh, these scatter points, uh, using these scatter points, uh, statistically, uh, statistically uh, you can uh, come up with uh, this line, linear line, okay? this linear line. And this linear line is the line that uh, is kind of, a, uh, this line is uh, the, uh, the average, average, uh, average between the, uh, Average, uh, uh, average, uh, the minimum. This is called the minimum. Uh, this, this line is, is uh, uh, the, the, the based on the minimum barriers, minimum barriers, um, the statistical. Okay, okay. So simply speaking, this is trend line. Okay, Be, uh, uh, based on this S five hundred return and the meta return. Okay, and this line is expressed in this linear function, okay? Uh, in, in case of this, y is meta, okay? y is the return of meta. x is the return of uh, uh, SM5 market return, okay? So uh, this linear function shows that when market return X changes, what would be the result of return of a meta? Okay, so uh, this 1.0092 is basically risk of this security beta because X is the market return. There's a benchmark we use a, 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 as, the, 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 as, you, as a benchmark you use the S&P 500, okay? So if when market return changes 1%, right? Then Beta's return is 1.0092% of sorry, multiply one minus 0 0.0186. So you can estimate the return of a meta using this historical data and scatter line, scatter points and this trend line and didn't render it and the functions of this trend line, this you can estimate the, uh, the stock price uh, return of uh, uh, return of uh, uh, return return on this investment on the stock meta okay and uh, this slope is this one the slope of this line is 1.0092. So you can read this. Uh, so, so I think you guys can read this uh, linear function and uh, you may understand how to come up with this linear function. This is pretty simple process, okay? So, it, 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 so pretty simple process. So, Understanding of how to read this, how 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 we came up with this trend line, okay. 
you may be able to understand uh, these graphs. Okay. Um, this graph is uh, uh, looks different from uh, this one, right? This is the uh, trend line uh, based on the returns of uh, S&P 500 meta. So this graph shows that, okay, um, let's say using this, based on this, so based on this function, okay, why in case of a meta, we you uh, using this trend line, we, we have with this function, right? So taking this function, we can draw like this. Because this is linear function, the slope is constant, right? Slope is constant. So beta A uh, slope is constant. Um, uh, but the, the thing is that um, if we have X as, if we have X as a, a beta, right? And uh, Y as a, uh, S as return, uh, this graph actually shows that if you take a higher risk, if you take a higher risk, If you have uh, more risk, this beta is uh, the risk of individual star, right? If you have a high risk, then you are supposed to have a higher return. This graph shows that simple uh, concept. And let's say we have asset and SAP. For the same risk, this is risk, simply risk. For the same risk, 1.2, uh, bet, what beta 1.2 means that, oh, uh, beta as SLA, SFB both um, has uh, 1.2 times the volatility, uh, 1.2 times, 1.2 times, 1.2 times of volatility against the market return. So, but and when it, when why they have the same risk, the return is different, right? Here and here. So SLA has a higher return. If you, even though they have the same risk, so you are supposed to take SLA. Let's take. Um, let's see. The market risk, uh, the is single. The, the, the their the their risk is one point six times uh, the market uh, return. Then SLA has also higher return than SFB. Then what this graph is actually means that given the same level of risk, you are supposed to take uh, the stock with higher return. Okay, that's all this uh, this graph is actually mean. And as I said, it beta is the slope of this trend line. Okay, where is where is it going? Trend line. from this, okay? Let's take on... Um, okay, I think then we can talk about security market line. Security market line is a pretty simple, the security market line. Okay, so uh, what is gonna be securities 
return based on the market, yeah, uh, according uh, in, in comparison with the market return. So let's say y axis, y axis is asset expected return and x axis is uh, asset beta or risk. Risk compared to market, market risk. Market risk is actually one, right? So this one, this is a market. If you have a whole securities, uh, or if you have a whole security in the market, then you're supposed to have a better one. Or oh, some securities may have uh, uh, its, its price and its return may uh, move uh, exactly um, hand in hand with uh, the market return. But there are not such a stuff. It's a little bit hard to find, but let's assume that. So this security market line simply shows that as we have a higher beta, we supposed to have a higher return, expected return. And this slope is, if you have a, a market portfolio, then market risk market risk is one. Right, so your return is market return minus risk free. Risk free rate raise. Okay, why do we have risk free rate? Why do we have risk free? Okay, I I I I I skipped one on one thing. Risk free rate. Um, Here we have risk free rate, right? Um, let's go back to this efficient front line. Okay, this efficient front line. Oh. As I said, this efficient front line consists of only risk asset, right? Only risk asset. Uh, after Harry Markowitz uh, uh, published this uh, modern portfolio theory, uh, after that, some economists uh, came up with uh, what if uh, what about the risk-free, 0% uh, uh, standard deviation if it's risk-free, right? Risk-free here. So what about this asset, risk-free asset? What are we gonna do with this risk-free asset? So they think that, oh, some investors may have only risk-free asset, right? While, uh, so this efficient front frontier reflects uh, are based only on a risk asset. So they came up with uh, some combination of two assets. One is risk-free asset. The other one is risk uh, risk-free asset. The other one is risk asset. So if you have risk-free asset and risk asset. If you have this line that is uh, tangent on this line, so, uh, the mid, uh, mid, mid on mid some specific point on this efficient line, this is going to be the um, efficient front line when you have a risk-free asset, okay?
this is risk free. So when you have a risk free and risk asset, you may have also like, yeah, we have a risk free asset and a risky asset. If you combine these two asset, risk free and risky asset, you are supposed to have this efficient line, linear efficient line. So based on that efficient front line, if you have a take, if you take a more risk, you are supposed to have a higher return. Okay. And given the same level of risk, you are supposed to take a, 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 the asset that uh, generate a higher return. Okay, so here we uh, we added we added a risk free asset, not only risk asset. Okay, so from here we when we uh, we are, we are going to also have uh, when you have a market portfolio, we are going to also have risk-free asset, okay? When you take a whole market, we, we will also have uh, some um, uh, risk-free asset, okay? Risk-free asset also generates some return, right? So the difference between market return and risk-free asset return is called market premium. Okay, market premium is the return for systematic risk. Okay, market portfolio has its own risk, what is, which is called the systematic risk. So market return minus uh, risk free return is return for systematic risk or market premium. Okay. And and let's move on to um okay I'm gonna let's move on to a capital asset pricing model. This looks pretty similar and pretty, pretty uh, familiar, right? This is the, the, the function of this linear line, okay? This is expected return of some specific asset. And this is beta of a specific asset. So this is risk-free rate. So how to read this formula? We have, uh, this is, uh, we have a portfolio of risk-free asset plus risky asset. Okay. But in, in most cases, we, we have some risk-free such as uh, we have some, uh, the, the, some, uh, Money uh, deposit with the bank, right? So let's uh, let, let's imagine like that. So we have so we have uh, two uh, the portfolio we have has two uh, asset. One is risk free asset, the other one is risk asset. So risk free asset supposed to have uh, let's say some specific risk free return. Let's say two percent. Okay, and this beta. is the specific risk of uh, a security compared to market return. So in other words, if beta is higher than one, right? Higher than one or less than one, if 
if the peptide one is uh, the return of the security is moved uh, or along with uh, the market, right? So this is the market premium. Market premium means uh, systematic market premium is a return for systematic risk. So this is the return for systematic systematic risk. And when specific security beta or its sensitivity to the uh, sensitivity to the sensitivity uh, is, is a is level of changes in return compared to market return. So in other words, we can call it sensitivity of uh, return to the uh, market return, right? If the single security sensitive, uh, the beta is uh, higher than, uh, is most, uh, as, as the, security, the, bet, the security return is more sensitive uh, to the changes, uh, the, to the changes in the market return, the security beta is gonna be higher than one. Okay, so as the beta is higher, which means that the security has uh, um, security has more. A more risk, more risk than market risk. So more risk, uh, when the security has more risk than market risk, it means that the security has uh, uh, some, every, every security has its own unsystematic risk, right? So if you take a single security, you cannot get rid of, you, you also take some un unsystematic risk, right? In the whole market, uh, in the whole market portfolio, you don't take any system on system risk. But we are talking about single security, right? So based on single security, we uh, like to draw security market line, security versus market line, right? So this function actually tells that in this function, this uh, beta tells that how much the, in terms of risk, in terms of, uh, in terms of risk, how much sensitive the return of a single security is to the changes in the market return. Okay, so if the security is very sensitive to the market return, let's see, you see here, Asset A has a higher, asset A has the higher slope, right? Than asset B, right? So asset A's return, given the same level of risk is higher than asset as a B, um, just a minute. This is not, this is not the best uh, way to describe. Okay. Let's, let's read this one. Um, yeah, time everyone read. Risk free time bearing money reward for merely waiting for your star yeah, without taking any risk. Uh, this, this is a market premium, market premium reward for being a system, bearing systemic risk. And uh, B1 is the amount of systemic risk present in particular risk related to market portfolio. So uh, B1 is the, the sensitivity of a single security to the uh, to change this market return. That, 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 that is the best way to describe the uh, beta, okay? If 
if the line is a steeper, you're getting steeper, right? Then let's see this. Which one is better? Mm. Yeah. So as you as as the uh, as we uh, as as the beta is increased, you are supposed to have a uh, yeah, high return, and uh, as the this one is steeper than for the same risk. For the same risk, you have a higher return, right? So, then slope is, then slope is higher. Hmm. I'm getting a little bit lost here. Okay. Uh, I think I should draw another graph to describe uh, uh, this uh, capital asset pricing model in next class, okay? So I need another graph uh, than this one. So, uh, so all I, or the, the key point is that the beta is the, um, the sensitivity of a single security in terms of return to the market return, okay? So with that understanding, we are going to talk about um, we are going to talk about well, a little bit more. We'll talk about this uh, uh, capital asset pricing model, and uh, using this capital asset pricing model, you are going to solve some uh, questions. And then we, we are going to talk about uh, capital market efficiency. Capital market efficiency also um, are really important in terms of uh, uh, interpreting. Uh, interpreting this uh, capital asset pricing model and yeah and uh, uh, this beta okay so yeah that that's that's the model that's all for today uh, any questions Okay, so today's uh, concept, especially um, the efficient front line and the systematic and systematic risk and beta uh, is maybe a little bit uh, hard to swallow in a one uh, uh, in one class. So I'm going to extend this uh, this uh, this uh, this, uh, this class uh, to the next one to. Uh, make you guys uh, better understanding uh, this concept. Okay, so see you uh, next class. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, professor. Thank you, professor. Thank you.